We will win. So goes the epic battle cry of the Ripiverse, created by Eric July. And I am Captain Garrett, and this is my first ever Iron Age review. This is a review that is long overdue for ISOM number one. So I was there the day that the young Ripa launched his campaign for ISOM number one, and I have to say it was one of the most exciting, awesome live streams ever of all time. As of this time, I think the latest count I'm aware of is he made something like $3.7 million in sales. What an incredible achievement. I spent more money than is wise or reasonable on the Ripiverse campaign, and I intend to spend a great deal more on the second campaign. So I just had to collect them all. Oh, yes. This is, this is my favorite cover. It is so cool. It just looks like the old days of comics, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. Also got that cover autographed, bagged and boarded, not touched. These were the limited edition ones, and I was not going to miss out. And this is the only one I opened, also autographed, because, you know, this one you can still get. So that's the one I allowed to be exposed to the atmosphere. At the end of Eric's book, to his enormous credit, he writes, We hope you enjoyed ISOM number one. Please give us your feedback wherever possible. If you are a creator, check, check, check. Don't hesitate to let the world know how you felt about the book. We want to see these videos and hear those podcasts. Well, you ask, sir, and I shall deliver. And this is going to be an honest review. You know, one of the reasons we all hate the access media is because they're a bunch of fakes and phonies and they are corporate shills they lie and they and when they're caught in their lies they defame fans by calling them its and phobes uh, for simply disagreeing or for simply having issues with the latest mcu garbage so if we are to be men and women of our word and uh, and to live up to our own principles, we must be honest when critiquing one another. And so I shall expect no less when my books and other works are critiqued by you, the audience, and of course, any other creators out there. And I shall deliver no less. Fortunately, it is my great pleasure to report to you that I loved this comic. It was excellent. And I rate it very highly. I think it was a great story, great characters, and uh, I would say Eric July spared no expense in the art and in the, I mean, creation of his business model. He basically created his own website, his own campaign, warehoused all of the products. He created collector's items. He collected exclusive, he created exclusive cover art, and he resisted the temptation to print more of those covers when fans demanded or, well, requested that he allow that he make more available uh, because he said, no, the point is this is a collector's item. Get him while you can. And uh, all of that contributed to the experience of being a comic book reader and a collector. And I loved that. And it was so much of the fun. Avery Silman is essentially a close-to-the-ground, street-level comic book hero. I love that. One of my favorite heroes was always Spider-Man. And one thing I loved about Spider-Man was he was the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You know, he was close to the ground. Most of the things he, were de he was dealing with were street-level, small-time criminals, occasionally turning into a big battle like the Sinister Six. And what I like about Isom is he's very much in that vein of those types of heroes. One of the problems with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the multiverses and the Infinity Stones and the, you know, all this... The timelines, the sacred timelines, it's like they've, they've turned it into, they've turned every single problem in the Marvel Cinematic Universe into a world ending crazy battle for all existence, all time, ever, everywhere. Whatever happened to a superhero just like stopping a, a crook from, you know, purse snatching a, an old grandma? You know, like, I love that element. Okay, look at what a beautiful full page shot that is. Here's some things I like about Avery's character. He's just a man who takes no shit. I like that he's got an ego. He's a little bit easy to get riled up, 
by the bad guys, which I think will be a fun character flaw in future entries. Once he's got a mission, there's no talking him out of it. He's a masculine hero. He is a confident hero. He's a determined hero. He's torn between a life of responsibility as a superhero and a life of peace and simplicity on his ranch. I think for any good superhero, especially one that doesn't have a secret identity, because he doesn't really have a secret identity. So I like that the split with him is the life he wants versus the life he's sort of destined to have. Yaira is excellent, and uh, she's a super cool character. She looks beautiful. Again, just a strong feminine hero. They're just awesome. I have, you know, I have my critiques of the storyline. So why don't we just go ahead and get into it? Comics have always kind of had a little bit of cheesy dialogue. Comics have always had often somewhat clunky prose, and that's always been a little bit part of their charm. That is not to say that there isn't amazing writing in comic books, because there really is. At times, when the dialogue was a little clunky in this, I really didn't mind, because it really just reminded me of comic books I used to read. I know this is going to sound super wonky, but ending sentences with prepositions that could be just slightly tightened, and uh, it would make the dialogue flow a lot better because you never want stilted dialogue to take the reader out of it. There's really only one part of the comic book I have a major issue with. This is essentially the conversation between Darren and Avery that essentially sets up the conflict for the whole rest of the book. And this is in the very beginning. So Avery goes to Darren to investigate the disappearance of Jasmine and... When he confronts Darren, their conversation has a couple of jarring moments. Darren basically jumps into a lot of, as you know, Bob, explanation. And this is a trope in which characters are explaining things to each other that they already know. Now, that's not necessarily something you can't get away with. And I'm not exactly sure what Darren is getting at here. Essentially, what he's saying is, hey, I knew you in high school and I didn't admire you. You didn't really accomplish much, and you were kind of a subpar student, and then you dropped off the grid. And that's why I'm angry for some reason. And I just couldn't quite understand what the point was in that conversation. He says, hey, look, you know, I have this empire. Some I built it somewhat legally, somewhat illegally. And yeah, you know, I have a use for women and uh, in this club, and it is what it is. Jasmine is none of your business. Why doesn't Darren just deny she's there? Why doesn't Darren say, look, you know me, I run girls sometimes, we had our past, uh, here, but she ain't here, and you're barking up the wrong tree. That's one way to go. Or he could simply say, yeah, Jasmine's here, but she's a grown woman, she's here by choice, which later in the dialogue he does actually say. But what confuses me is why not deny that she's there, or lie and say she's here, but nothing is wrong. Either way, at least it presents a scenario in which Avery could back off. Instead, Darren kind of says the worst of both worlds. He says, yeah, I do bad things with women here. Also, she's here and don't worry about it. Uh, and uh, she's none of your business. And it's like, well, that's sort of like saying, please, make a problem now. Avery now has to kick in the doors and fight a bunch of thugs, and this takes him into the path of another except, which is um, the term for a superhero in this universe, and a great fight ensues. What I will say worked well is you get the sense that Avery and Darren have a past, and this is actually the strength of the entire book. In all cases, I can tell that there is more to every character than you're reading, and I can tell that July has put a lot of effort into making sure each character has a well thought out backstory. So the issue for me, I like Darren. I like him as a character. He's sort of like a smaller time kingpin, right? He's, well, I mean, he's basically a local gang leader, which is a great first book uh, villain for the hero to fight. So he's great. I like the subtle implication that there's a connection in a past, and I'm curious about it. I just think this dialogue had a couple logical inconsistencies that got in the way of the story I think the book is trying to tell. One thing that I sort of wanted more of was more of a personal 
emotional connection between Avery and his mission, right? Essentially, his sister asks him for a favor. And really, the the way that she tugs on Avery's heartstrings is by saying, hey, you know, Jasmine's mother was very special to both of us, and we owe her this. So in a way, there's sort of three degrees of separation between Avery and his mission. He, his emotional stake is his sister's favor to help Jasmine on behalf of her mother, whom he has an emotional connection with. I think it's a shorter path would have simply been for the emotional stake to either be directly with Avery and his sister or Avery and Jasmine. So in other words, perhaps having having it be instead of Avery and his sister both really caring about Jasmine's mother, it's just simply that they both have a really strong affinity for Jasmine. I'm not saying that that would have been a better story. I'm saying I think that would have been a shorter path because what I love about what this book is doing is it's creating a very immediate and simple inciting incident for the main character. These are small things. Uh, the basic elements of the story all work, and it is essentially establishing an entirely new comic book universe, an entirely new comic book universe with all original characters who have never uh, been based on any other previous source material. That is an enormous undertaking. And the first book simply has to succeed. And he does that. He introduces his principal, which is Isom. He introduces just enough of his past that we're intrigued. He introduces a villain who is worthy of that hero. He introduces a couple of side characters that imply greater threats and possible allies down the road. And in the end of the book, he even gives us a few hooks for other heroes in a larger world to come. And he does all of that by building it around a very simple, close to the ground, street level superhero story. But in no way does it merit the kind of absolute uh, foaming at the mouth hatred that he is getting from his detractors. And that is happening for one reason and one reason only. Humanity, unfortunately, is often a bucket, and we are often crabs in that bucket, and those of us that try and escape are constantly being pulled down by haters and naysayers, and I think the way Rippa has handled his haters and naysayers is absolutely brilliant, and he's done a great job of that, and I hope he continues to monetize them and make great entertainment for me, because I watch those streams, and I sure do love it. All right, let's take, let's take a look at some of the other cool things you want to see. Okay, how cool is that? And there's even a warning not to open it. Like, there's detail in every little thing. I have the cards, which are epic. Dude, these cards are so worth it. Make sure you don't miss these on any future campaigns. This gives me the fun of comics again. So there is Isom's card. And as you can see, there's details on the back. There's Yaira's card. She is freaking badass. When Ripiverse launched, it absolutely inspired me to pick myself up and get back into this and get and to join the Iron Age. And it made me realize that I joined the Iron Age three years ago without even knowing it. Thank you, young Rippa Eric July, for restoring my work ethic and for inspiring me to just get the hell off the couch and get back to work. I do thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. And so until next time, sailors and star knots, this is Captain Garrett saying, I will see you out there. Make sure to check out my novel series, Blood and Oak. It's available now on Amazon. It follows the sword and sails adventures of midshipman John Sullivan. When his sister is kidnapped and sold into slavery by the Barbary pirates, this daring young Navy officer embarks on a suicidal quest for rescue and revenge. It's available now on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and a fantastic audiobook narrated by Travis Baldry. I'm not just giving commentary and commenting on the problems in entertainment. I'm doing my best to be part of the solution, and I would be truly honored to earn your readership and your support. Until then, I say hail to you, hail to the fellowship, and hail to the Iron Age of Entertainment.